Hello. Are we live? I think we are. Uh, hi. Uh, <laughs> you're with uh, me, Mike Mason from Casium, and this is the first full-on session of The Dead of Winter, written by Tim Wiseman. And um, I'm joined by our illustrious and steadfast investigators, uh, who will now introduce themselves, uh, starting with Lynn. Hello, I'm Lynn Hardy, uh, and I'm playing Francis Ball. Gemma. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gemma Hewitt, and I'm playing Georgina Sullivan. Becky. Hi, I'm Becky Rose, and I'm playing Eleanor Wright. Uh, yes, I think that's my name. <laughs> and then last not, but not least, Jason. I'm Jason Green. I am playing Maxime Lawrence Elliott, dilettante. Fantastic. Uh, hopefully, some of you who are, who are watching this will have already seen the four short prologue uh, videos that we did to kickstart the campaign off. Uh, but not to worry if you haven't, you can catch up on uh, YouTube. Uh, and indeed, this, uh, this session will be on YouTube after the Twitch stream. Uh, but before I start, I just want to say a couple of things. Thanks for joining us. And also uh, to say this is a playtest of a uh, forthcoming campaign from Chaosium. Um, so it is um, a bit nuts and bolts at times. Uh, it isn't perfect necessarily. Hopefully it is. Um, and, uh, you know, the point of doing this is not only to enjoy the game, but also to, you know, test the campaign. And uh, if there are anything that goes wrong or issues and all that kind of thing, that's all good from, well, my point of view, because it's uh, showing us that, you know, what, uh, what, what's good and what's uh, not so good in the campaign as we play it through. So, uh, you know, if something goes wrong, that's all part of the show. And uh, the other thing is uh, I have to do a standard uh, apology as uh, a lot of this scenario is set in Russia with many Russian names. And I'm really, really good at pronouncing Russian names. So you'll have to forgive and uh, excuse my uh, fantastic Russian. Um, so with that, nevertheless, uh, we will, uh, we will uh, dive in. Um, so just to set the scene, uh, as covered in the prologues, the, uh, the four investigators do not know one another as yet. Individually, they have over the last, uh, well, the last handful of days had a visit, well, two visits from somebody from their past, somebody who, as far as they know, to all intents and purpose, is dead, but has appeared seemingly alive and had conversations with them and so forth. Uh, they've also received uh, a letter from Russia from uh, someone they don't know called Nadezhda Palisa who uh, has invited them to come to Russia um, to talk to the uh, about the love dead and things, uh, things going on, which is all a little confusing at this moment. No one's really got an idea of why and uh, what's going on and how on earth this Nadezhda knows our characters. Uh, but on the same day, they also receive a letter from the foreign office inviting them to a meeting that very night. Uh, and makes mention of, uh, uh, well, things of great import, which we will come on to in just a moment or two. So I'm going to start uh, the session uh, with you uh, having made your way across London to the uh, St. Ermin Hotel where the meeting tonight at 7, 7 p.m. is taking place. I'm assuming you're all intending to be, you know, on time and prompt. Um, and you are all loitering in the lobby of the hotel. And this is where we start. And um, does, is, well, does, is anyone doing anything particular? Or would you like to kind of say, uh, if you're, you know, wearing a massive peacock feather or something to you know, be noticed? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. How, how, how are you? Uh, what's your, what's your, maybe just quickly go around and give me a, an idea of what your, expectations or thoughts may be at this point in time? Well, I am ra still rather hoping that this rather mysterious um, call is all about a wonderful commission um, as an artist, as a sculptor. Um, you know, okay, the Home Office is a bit of a curveball, but you never know. Um, so I have put on my very best, smartest, um, yet arty, outfit 
and I'm currently managing to have a, a gin and tonic to steady my nerves and I'm just uh, admiring the architecture um, of the hotel and wondering what this is all about but looking fairly fairly suave and not too horrified or out of place. Well obviously as a private investigator I'm going to be um, <clears throat> They're slightly early, I would say, just to keep an eye on any suspicious looking types who might saunter in, obviously expecting to be somewhere. Um, of, as um, it is official business, I will have dragged out my best suit, quite possibly the one I even got married in, as it is the home office. Um, and I'll just be keeping an eye out for anyone who looks even vaguely suspicious. I think uh, Maxime would be wearing one of his better evening suits, but as you can imagine, he has many evening suits. Um, he's chosen quite a bright cravat as well. Um, he will be drinking red wine. And whilst this is a bit unexpected, um, he's used to being invited randomly to quite posh events such as this. In fact, he's probably seen a few acquaintances already that he, he has seen or, or at least spoken to a few times. So he will be mingling quite happily, um, getting even a little bit merry as he drinks his wine a bit too quickly. I'll be I'll, I'll be dressed for work, of course. You don't mean a formal dress because I'm a journalist. Uh, he's trying to be. <laughs> I, I have my notepad, of course. It's always in my handbag, just in case, along with a pen and a pencil because pens run out. <laughs> So yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be formally and smartly dressed. Very good. Um, I, I froze for a second there, so I think you all went. I'm assuming you did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, got a, I, I have a dodgy internet connection tonight for the first time in weeks. So of course it would be tonight when we're live streaming. But never mind. The Sturmin I mean, Hotel is uh, situated in the genteel quarter of St. James's in Westminster. It's a presently sprawling seven-storey building uh, built around three sides of a rectangular plot. And um, the lobby is nice and charming. It's red carpeted and white painted and uh, it's got triple height with a curving balcony uh, running the full kind of way around the lobby. And a split staircase leads up to the balcony and onto the various guest rooms. There's a reception desk and... Um, uh, if you remember your letter, hint, uh, it did say to ask at the reception for a Mr. Weston. Um, it did. Well, there's no time like the present. Wander over to reception and ask for Mr. Weston with letter in hand, just in case one of these uppity um, desk clerks tries to, uh, you know, come over all, all officious at us. Oh, at me okay. anyway. Okay, uh, I'm I'm going to say that you you see Francis, uh, the rest of you, you know, wander over to reception and perhaps catch the name Western being said. Um, and so I don't know if anyone wants to come forward or if you're going to wait, um, you know, to see what happens. Well, of course I'm going to barge in. I'm a reporter. Um, uh, tell me, what is your business with Mr. Weston? I'm, I'm, I'm from the Herald. Um, identification, please, miss? Uh, well, certainly. I, here's my press pass. And, uh, well, I, I too am here to see uh, Mr. Weston. <laughs> so I have no idea what about. So I was curious. Uh, who are you? I'm going to very carefully check her press credentials to make sure they're genuine <laughs> before I say, um, Mr. Francis Ball, um, at your service, miss. Francis Ball. Okay, and, and who do you represent? Myself. Uh, an individual? Yes. I see. Um, so, uh, what do you do for a living? I'd prefer not to say at the moment, if you don't mind, okay. miss. Okay, clandestine. Right, well, uh, that's interesting. I wonder why we're here. Well, hopefully this Mr Weston's going to be able to tell us. I do hope so. But there's some I'm more people of, here. I'm overhearing this and thinking, this is not about an art commission, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm sort of debating legging it. <laughs> but, but 
my you know i'm still intrigued especially after kind of what's been happening which was all a bit weird so i'm going to throw my oar in and saunter over to this rather unlikely pair and uh, say oh are you seeing mr weston um i i'm supposed to see him too oh i see Looks Not like his to oh, uh, I'm going to talk to the, the man on the desk and say, uh, which room should we go to? Uh, uh, I've, I've called up for Mr. Weston and he says he's coming down to, uh, to greet you uh, momentarily. If you'd oh. just like to wait here, I'm sure he won't be long. Okay. Thank I should introduce you. myself nicely. Say, uh, Georgina Sullivan, how do oh. you do? Oh, pleased to make your acquaintance, Miss Sullivan. Sandra Francis Paul, Sandra. how do you do? <laughs> how do you do, Miss? Uh, uh, very well, thank you. Um, uh, uh, tell me, uh, Miss Sullivan, um, sorry, is it Miss or Mrs. or Miss? Uh, a tear comes into her eye and she says, Miss. Oh, fish out my oh, handkerchief yes. and hand it over. <laughs> And uh, do you know why you're here at all? No, no. Oh, I say, how peculiar. And so the three of us gather. Max, are you, loitering uh, over there. are you loitering or are you coming in at this point? So Maxime will definitely be watching, kind of glancing over, or if he's got his back to mm. the three, sort of turning around every so often. Um, he doesn't cue, so he would definitely not kind of come behind and attempt to sort of reveal himself to see Mr. Weston as well. But considering the three of you have come forward and you are indeed to him a rather eclectic bunch, uh, he was not expecting such people to be here tonight. Uh, he might make the odd sort of slightly flippant comment um, to who he's sort of with sort of quietly. Um, but at the moment, he he is intending to kind of keep on on mingling and talking with the people. Um, and then when Mr. Weston does come down, he wants to kind of make his own introduction. OK. As you know, as you loiter and uh, chat amongst yourselves um a man appears uh he is um uh, fairly slim um short black hair uh wire ring uh, rimmed uh, spectacles um a large smile on his face um uh his demeanor seems um quite friendly he kind of arrives and um goes straight to the receptionist and says that Mr. Weston, I believe you have guests for me, which you all overhear. Um, and the, the, the receptionist kind of points in the direction of the three of you um, uh, who are kind of, you know, in a loose group. And he turns around, oh, oh I see you're here. They're very good, very good. And uh, introduces himself to each of you and looks around and um, looks to you, uh, Maxime. And um, you can see that he's kind of, waiting to see if you respond mm. uh, so maxime will will turn to one of his acquaintances and says if you'll excuse me and he actually gives his wine glass to to whoever it is in front of him um and uh mr weston good evening to you sir oh well, good evening uh, mr uh, elliot thank you thank you very much for joining uh, joining us uh, if you would uh, care to follow me to the bar uh, I, I, I shall, uh, I shall uh, get get a drink, and we can uh, have this uh, little meeting where we're going to have. Is that okay? Absolutely, it's wonderful to be back here again. I haven't been back here for some time. Things have changed a little, but uh, yeah, it's very good. Down to kind of uh, out of the lobby, down the corridor towards the, one of the. Uh, one of the bars uh, on the on the ground floor. He does say, I'm, you know, he, he repeats, you know, thank you, uh, thank you for coming, all of you. I'm, I'm sorry for the mad dash uh, and the mystery. Um, and uh, he guides you into the bar, uh, and uh, there's nobody else in the bar apart from the bartender, and uh, in a um, in one of the plush, high-backed leather kind of. Uh, chairs is another fellow who's uh looks to be taller than western 
Um, he's got a distinct, immediately kind of noticeable kind of military bearing to him, although he's not in uniform, he is in a suit. Um, and a um, uh, uh, little, he just seems a little sterner than Weston, who is a lot more, you know, apparently, you know, cheery and friendly. Um, he leads you over to this fellow and says, uh, let me introduce you to, uh, to Mr. Hill who's going to be joining us for the meeting. Uh, please take a seat. Now, can I get anyone a, a sherry or uh, uh, something else? A glass of wine, perhaps? Cabernet Sauvignon, please. I need right. a drink whilst I'm working, I'm sorry. I don't suppose there's any chance of a pint of bitter? Oh, yes, of course, yes, of course, yes. Uh, yes uh, I'll have there. a gin and tonic, uh, thank you. Right, of course, yes, yes. And uh, he, uh, he uh, you know, calls the bartender over and, uh, Gives you gives them uh, your drinks. He uh, he uh, doesn't take a drink, neither does Mister Hill. Um, once the drinks are served and the bartender has uh, you know ensconced himself back behind the bar, some distance away, Mister um, Hill uh, opens his mouth and says, "Hello, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, first off, I'd like to ask that you treat whatever you hear tonight as confidential." Uh, please don't mention anything that we discuss to anyone, including uh, family and spouses and so forth. Um, uh, at this, Weston kind of looks across you all, big grin on his face, nodding kind of thing, uh, just sort of taking you all in, I guess. Um, then Hill says, secondly, I'd like to uh, apologise. I'm aware that uh, all of you received a letter from Moscow by first post today. I know that because uh, they had previously been opened and read by a few senior Foreign Office staff members, including myself. Um, there was the requisite uh, authority to do so, uh, sitting with the Royal Mail. I realise it's poor form to read a chap's uh, mail, but uh, the letters were flagged on our watch list. And uh, well, I'm afraid that's the world we live in these days. All of your letters, uh, you know, I, I can assure you are exactly the same content, uh, written by the same hand, uh, individually addressed. Uh, I hope the rest of our discussion now will show you why uh, this had to happen. He again looks around, kind of making eye contact with each of you. Uh, uh, it's probably best if I say why we've asked you here. He, uh, at this Western by his side, is producing a, a notepad and pencil and uh, seems to then proceed to kind of scribble a few notes as he goes. You notice that um, Hill has a, um, uh, has a document wallet open uh, with some typed pages inside that he seems to be, well, your guess is he's using as some sort of script or notes uh, for the uh, discussion. Um, if um, one of you is eagle-eyed and wants to say, look, I'll, you know, if you want to make a spot hidden, Ooh. you can... Oh, let's let's see how the dice are going to behave tonight. Then, I, I really should, from a professional standpoint, obviously. <laughs> obviously, definitely observing everybody. Oh, oh yeah, that's a seventeen. Um, have, that's a hard success. Have a tick. I will have a tick. I got a slight success. Okay, I, I got a great roll, but um, apparently my spot hidden isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> so I am I'm far too engrossed in people's dress sense and other sort of menial things like that. Okay. Um, cool. Um, excuse me. Um, right. Uh, getting a spot hidden, um, what it basically means is I'm going to give you a copy of his typed notes. Uh, as a handout at some point. I'm going to go through them anyway, so you're going to get you're going to get the gist of what's on there already. But basically, for what you, a quick observation now, uh, you can see he has a list of questions he's about to ask you, and you can see the name John Palliser written on there, and you can see something about travel. Um, and um, so you get, uh, you get the impression that, uh, you know, uh, it's, it is clearly to do with the letters, you, you know, the letter you received and so forth. Um, he kind of cracks straight into it, um, addressing it to no one in particular, but um, uh, kind of expecting you all to kind of give an answer, I guess. So first he says, um, I just want to confirm, do you, uh, do you know one another? 
No, I've never met any of these people before this evening, sir. No, I've never met any of these lovely people either. Oh, at all. Um, yes, Just and you, you... For, for, for one moment of your time, you, you, no, I don't know any of these people, but also you're, you're saying that each of us got the same letters. That is correct. Uh, yes, that is indeed correct. The same letter from uh, Nadezhda Palisa uh, in, uh, in Moscow, Russia, in fact. Um, and uh, which leads me on to my next question and is to say, um, have you, um, what do you know why you may have received a letter from uh, this person? Absolutely no idea, sir. I presume the rest of you are Georgina's going to look a little bit shifty but shake her head because she's beginning to kind of well I mean she did see something and the letter referred to it and yeah so she'll kind of go hmm, hmm, no. <laughs> <laughs> the letter referred to seeing loved dead I mean that sounded a most peculiar terminology to me well it Yes, that yes, um, yes, that was an intriguing um, reference. Um, do you know what it means? Um, I presume it means seeing people that are dead that you love. Ah, and um, why do you think uh, Mrs. Palliser uh, would have mentioned that in the letter to yourselves? It's a, it's, an area, it's a little bit of a grey area for ourselves, and I'd be very interested in any light you could shine on that. Hmm. I think I've just pieced some things together. Oh. Oh, I say. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it that way before. Would you like to share what it is you've thought of, madam? Well... When I was younger, I had a brother, he was very close to my brother, who fought in the Battle of Armenes, and was killed. Oh, no, and, um, sorry. Oh, it's okay, I was over it or I thought I was. And lately I think I've been seeing him, you know. <laughs> I may have had quiet. a similar experience um, with my dear fiance. Oh, handkerchief time again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, um, Maxime and Francis, say anything at this point, or is you, do you just remain quiet at this? Um, I think Francis is going to remain quiet. No, actually, he's not, is he? Francis is not going to remain quiet at this point in time. He, he's far too sort of friendly and helpful and enthusiastic. He's like, well, it's funny you should say that, actually. My dead uncle's been coming to visit me of late. I, uh, I have a mother who is Russian. Uh, so, of course, that is why this person's been writing to me. But um, a chap... I knew from uh, college was my visitor, shall we say. Interesting, Hill says. Weston is frantically scribbling at this point. Um, Hill says, um, so let me get this straight. I don't wish to offend anyone. Uh, just so I understand, you're saying that in the last few days or so, you have experienced some sort of visitation or, or perhaps dream um, of someone that has passed? Is, is this what you're saying to me? Well, it's that or someone's playing a particularly mean practical joke on all of us. Yes, I suppose so. Interesting. He, 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 he looks to Weston and they both lock eyes um, and share this kind of look that if you would like to make a psychology role, now would be a good time. <laughs> Like, do I have any decent psycho? Oh, we're not oh bad. wow. Um, extreme success. <laughs> oh, oh nice. dear. Um, that, that would be a fumble. Yes. Right, let's I'm, I'm... get it out of the way to start with. Oh, yes, I have got a good success. Okay. 
Maxime, did you roll? No, I'm not going to bother. My, my psychology okay. is diddly squat. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, there's no uh, consequences for the fumble, Francis. Spoil as, sport. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's only, only what's going on in your head. So I leave that to you to decide <laughs> how wrong it goes. Um, but uh, uh, Georgina and certainly Eleanor, um, what you detect from their look to one another is they have no clue what you're talking about and are kind of going, uh, what are they talking? You know, if they, could, if they were speaking, they'd be going, what are they on about? Well, but, you, you, you know, when you see someone and you think you recognise them. So, you know, I'm out shopping and I, I thought I saw my brother. And, you know, it's probably just someone else. But that's all I could think of. And that's all I was referring to, <laughs> really. Uh, 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 more uh, than that. He'll latches onto that and then... He goes on and about. Oh yes, uh, yes, it's uh, yes, it's, it's it's often strange. Uh, yes, uh, you could see somebody and uh, they uh, they bring to mind uh, someone you know. And yes, that, oh, that makes perfect sense. Yes, of course. Completely disregarding what you may have just said. Otherwise, he's now latched onto the fact that you've seen some people that uh, uh, look like some people you used to know. Uh, is what he thinks. However, Western, you can see he's far more pensive, and it's. Clogs are wearing. It's clear he doesn't know, really understand, but you can see that he's far more perhaps prepared to think about wider possibilities than Western, who appears to be a little bit more closed off in this regard. But uh, this, the moment, this is just seconds this passes in, but the moment quickly passes and uh, Hill um, picks up on the, uh, the note, uh, sorry, the mention of Russia and having a Russian mother and says, uh, says to Maxime, uh, yes, um, I, I wanted to ask um, what, if any of you have any connection or uh, uh, family uh, connections with, uh, with Russia, and you mentioned uh, your mother was Russian, is that right? Well, she is very much still here, so uh, is Russian. I uh, only know a little myself, um, but uh, yeah, she's still very much alive and kicking. Yes. But um, uh, she's never ever mentioned this Palisand before. Right, so you've no knowledge of uh, John Palliser or uh, Nadezda Palliser, whose former Palliser. name was uh, Panova. They don't ring any bells. No, I've, uh, I've sent a letter to my mother uh, with the hope of her enlightening, enlightening me, but uh, no, she's never spoken to these people. Right, okay. You, you mentioned... The letter you received from Russia, did you, to your mother? Well, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, that that not a problem at all. Uh, as I said before, just to just to recap and to to remind that uh, anything said in this meeting is not really would be great if you didn't repeat that beyond uh, uh, the people in this crew. Uh, thanks in advance. Um, he then looks to the rest of you and and pretty much says the same question do you any links to russia uh, any links to the palaces in any way you you know you none of you have so you're kind of all kind of shaking your heads to that point so he goes yep yeah, fair enough you see western kind of making a little note to that effect um he then it sort of uh, moves on to say um so um may not have links to russia but i'm sure you are aware of uh you know, uh, political theories and so forth. And uh, just wanted to understand uh, whether you'd had any um, connection, membership, affiliations uh, with the uh, Communist Party. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, I, 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 I appreciate it may sound a little funny, but I have to ask, as you as you can appreciate. So no, no, not not a member of the Communist Party at any point in your life, a member of a society university, perhaps, or uh, working union or, or so forth. He kind of looks across the wall. No, I mean, I'm sure Georgina knows some students who have, uh, especially art students, who have fairly revolutionary views, but she's... Um, She's kind of deciding that that's this now is not the time to bring those people up. Okay. <laughs> Please, I'm a working professional. I could never hold down a job in a union. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> um, 
he, he, he kind of nods, Weston kind of, you literally kind of almost ticking, making four little ticks, you know, your past, as it were, it seems. Um, and um, he, his last kind of question of this section kind of says, uh, and, and finally, just to confirm, none of you have uh, traveled to Russia previously, is that correct? No, sir. Uh, and he looks at Maxine particularly, obviously having a Russian connection. You, well, you've never travelled back with your mother or anything like that? That was my out-of-character question I was just about to pose to you. Um, I assume I haven't done for at least a good decade or so, but as part of the background, would I have ever been there at some point? It's entirely up to you. Okay. In that case, Maxime will um, brush himself down a little bit and say... Well, uh, I I have visited once or twice. Um, I was very young. When was the last time I was there? 10, 11 years old? Pre, uh, Pre-university, certainly. Okay, so not for a while. Okay, very good. That, 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 you know, that's to be expected, I, I, I guess, really, with having uh, 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 your mother from, from the, uh, the old country, as it were. Um, Right. He then he then kind of like takes stock. Uh, has a has a, a call, calls for some water from the bartender, who also uh, and you're also offered to uh, replenish your glasses as needed. Um, and after a brief pause, he kind of picks up again and says, uh, I'm, I'm, "I want to tell you a little bit about uh, John Palliser, the husband of uh, Nadezda, who wrote to you. Um, John is British." Uh, he's 37 uh, years of age as, as a civil engineer, and uh, he's worked on a number, well, he led a number of uh, high profile municipal and military projects uh, in Britain and overseas. Um, in 1927, he married Diane Chamberlain, um, daughter of the Right Honourable Sir Austin Chamberlain, uh, Conservative MP, as you may recollect, um, and uh, a man who had uh, received the Nobel uh, Peace Prize. Uh, uh, in his uh, work uh, with France and Germany. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I digress. Uh, in September 1928, Palliser emigrated to Russia, uh, which was a complete surprise to colleagues and family, uh, and no one has subsequently been able to contact him. Um, his, uh, his marriage is still uh, existent uh, with uh, uh, Diane and... Um, uh, who is unaware of this current situation, I would say. Um, as you know, uh, Great Britain is yet to re-establish diplomatic ties with the Soviet Union. Um, our plan is to do so in October 1929, but there's um, not a lot of warmth on either side and um, a bit of nasty propaganda being put out by either side at this point but uh but uh you know nothing nothing unusual in that um uh, but as you can appreciate the situation is extremely sensitive um we have a, a leading british engineer who has abandoned his country uh, to go and live uh, uh with uh, and use his expertise with the bolshevik state and um <coughs> who is a um at this point in time, certainly a dangerous opponent to the British Empire. And um, he is the, uh, the son-in-law of a uh, prominent conservative politician uh, who uh, some, some have suggested may one day be a potential leader of the party. Um, that is why the watch was placed on uh, the correspondence, why your letters were opened. Um, Palliser has previously sent two brief letters back to his family in England uh, and he, he passes the letters round, which I'll, I'll share with you in a moment. Um, <coughs> but um, at this point, Hill also says, and I just, again, to reaffirm, to keep uh, the discussion and what I've uh, relayed to you uh, private and secret, as uh, none of this has been passed to uh, Mr. Palace's wife uh, uh, and so forth. And um, everything must be kept absolutely secret. I hope you understand. Um, I, the, uh, unfortunately, we do not have a current photograph of Mr. Palliser, uh, but he is a, a five uh, foot eight, uh, uh, fairly heavy build uh, with salt and pepper hair, clean shaven, this uh, our 
understanding of him. <coughs> um, so, um, I get to the matter in hand, and I, I, I can see from your faces that uh, you're yet to, the, the penny is not yet dropped uh, on why you're here. Um, you have a, a, an invitation to Russia, um, and um, we would like you to go. Uh, we would like you to go to Russia and uh, make contact uh, with uh, Mr. Palace's Russian wife uh, and hopefully uh, via that make contact with John himself. Um, we, um, it's in the interest of, of, uh, of the country and um, we um, we have a secondary reason as well. Uh, we believe that Mr. Palliser is working on a, a highly secret Soviet project, uh, which is the Bellamore Canal, uh, which uh, intends to uh, link uh, uh, shipping and so forth in Russia. Um, and um, it's currently the works are quite secret. We've been unable to ascertain what is actually going on and the state of the development. Uh, so one that is of interest to us, but more importantly, uh, there have been rumours of Russia uh, utilising slave labour in its uh, extensive projects for the so-called five-year plans, um, which would cause, uh, if it was to come to light that this is indeed the case, uh, would cause uh, significant embarrassment for the Russian uh, state, and um, and also is not is not the thing not a done thing, and uh, we. Uh, we as a responsible nation um, would frown on such activity. And um, we believe that if you were able to make contact with Mr. Palliser, then uh, you may be able to shed light and gather evidence should Russia be using slave labor to uh, in this construction project, uh, which would again um, help uh, your, your country. He kind of looks at you at this point to see whether there's, uh, you know, what your kind of reactions are to uh, to what he's saying. That seems a little dumbfounded. Uh, Mr. Weston, Mr. Hill, may I speak frankly? It seems to me that you are asking us um, to go and spy for our country. And whilst I am entirely sympathetic to the cause, I have to say, this is not really my area of expertise. I am a sculptress. I don't even speak Russian. Um, I certainly don't have any cloak and dagger skills that might assist in your endeavors. I, 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 I think you are asking a, quite a lot of ordinary citizens. Indeed. Well, I mean, I can understand how my skills might be useful, but um, <clears throat> the young lady does have a point, sir. I, I, I completely understand, but I want to reassure you and to, uh, and to remind you of one very important fact. A Russian citizen has directly invited you to come to Russia. This is not, this is not simply us sending a group of people willy-nilly to a, to a foreign state uh, who would easily be picked out and spotted as potential spies and so forth, but a group of people that are under invitation, who would be travelling by an organised tour group, organised by Russian state, uh, to uh, see the sites and uh, history of Russia as tourists, who during their course of their, their visit would make contact with the 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 uh, the Russian citizen who has contacted them. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, uh, the the setup couldn't be more beautiful and and orchestrated in this way without without our hands even touching it. We are merely <coughs> excuse me merely passengers on this wonderful opportunity, uh, and we are not asking you to go out of your way to to uh, 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 and, and and so forth. I mean, clearly um, clearly the uh, the Russian state will take an interest in any foreign visitor to their country at this time. However, with all our most definite assurances, um, we, we have seen this happen um, uh, with, other, with other parties that may have worked uh, in our interests previously with the Russian state. Um, 
they they pose no threats they will not you are you are citizens you are not military or not spies or so forth you are merely citizens observing what is going on in the country around and then and merely coming back and then letting us know the state of things we're not asking you to break into buildings or or to you know uh, involve yourself in in dire espionage merely to just see what is going on and and report back and so in that sense you would not be in any danger whatsoever um and <coughs> you know from a f professional point of view here um what makes you think that the russians aren't also watching mrs palliser and how likely is it that they know about us as well, well because that uh, kind well, of undercuts your argument a little bit well, I think quite likely they will they will uh, they will be watching Mrs. Palliser if if her husband is working on an important project for them. Um, but as but as I say, she has written to you um, and invited you to speak to her, and you have letters to prove it. Um, we don't anticipate there to be any issues, and we don't anticipate the Russian state would get in the way of that in any way. Um, and. Uh, it would merely be a, 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 a an additional additional stop on the tour while you're in Moscow to to arrange a, a, a small meeting with uh, Mrs. Palace uh, in Russia and um, and simply uh, see what you can find. That's that's really all it is. And uh, and if the Russians do take exception to us being observant and just having a look around. Um, what precisely is the Foreign Office going to do to get us back? I have a small son I'd really quite like to see grow up. I, I really I really think you're over, overly worrying about this, I have to say, and, and to reassure you that nothing like this would possibly happen. But I, I am confident to say that uh, Mr. Weston will join you in Russia and uh, should anything, not that we expect anything would, be untoward or, or you require assistance in any way, Mr. Weston will be on hand with the full... Uh, full might of the British Empire behind him to uh, to assist you in that regard. So there is yeah. absolutely nothing to worry about. At which point, Mr. Weston, you know, kind of looks over and says, "Absolutely, now I've been to Russia many times. I'm very familiar with everything there. You have uh, you have nothing to worry about at all. Nothing at all to worry about. It will be plain sailing all the way." Did Did you get a letter too then? Uh, no, no. But I I am a, I am a. a and the diplomatic papers, I, 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 uh, I'm going over to help set up the British Embassy in Moscow, which isn't obviously open at this time. We're, we're in the process of setting it up. So I have reason to, to be there as, as well, you see. Well, I'm you you, you me visiting me as, as your local, as, 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 as a local uh, embassy official uh, would, again, would not, would not raise any suspicion either. Seems twiddling his wine glass at this point, having finished it. Says, uh, don't uh, forget. Sorry, sorry. You carry on. Okay. Um, he he turns back to Mr. Hill and says, um, "One thing you have not yet explained to us as part of this elaborate ruse, Mr. Hill. Why has this lady contacted us in the first place, and how on earth has she managed to get hold of us?" Well, that is indeed the question um, for which we have no answer. Uh, uh, in spite of um, our reasons for us uh, wishing to uh, make best use of your talents and skills and, and observations whilst in Russia, um, we we have little interest in in the letter itself. It is merely a vehicle uh, to to allow you access to the country uh, uh, from our point of view. Uh, but uh, but for yourselves, I'm sure personally. Uh, you have many questions you would like to ask Mrs. Palliser. Uh, 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 and again, I, I, <laughs> we have no idea why you have been chosen, but, but it's uh, uh, a happy circumstance for us, uh, an opportunity that uh, we can't, you know, we can't turn away. Um, and don't forget, um, you'd be doing not only the British Empire a service, but a service to the Russian people as well. For if, if the Russian state is um, uh, turning on its own people and turning them into into slave labour for its for its many construction projects to 
to bring that to light would be a great justice and service, not only not only to the, the world, but to, to the very Russian people themselves. If Russia can be embarrassed enough to, to stop such practice, you would have done a great service to Mother Russia. The, the Home Office would, of course, be um, covering the expenses for the trip. Oh, yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. Of course, yes. Now, um, as, you, as, as we know, in the letter, uh, Miss Pallister had uh, uh, included a, uh, a tour itinerary for a tour leaving, uh, leaving London at the end of the month. Um, of course, the, uh, we would be more than happy to uh, cover all expenses and costs, and indeed we'll We'll be sending you each a cheque to cover cover the costs of booking passage on that tour uh, and any associated costs with visas and so forth. Um, and um, you would uh, not be out of pocket in any way. No, certainly. Well, that changes things a little bit. I have always wanted to go to Russia. So, if I may summarise, you know what what we're asking you, and we urgently do need your help in this. This is not a it's not a trivial matter. Um, we, we wish you to go to book yourselves onto the tour as, as, uh, as presented to you through the letter. Uh, the, tour, the tour agency is, uh, is, is uh, run by the Russian state. They will organize your visas. We have, that have nothing to do with it. We know fingerprints of our, ourselves on them. Um, they will organize everything that way. We wish to go on the tour, see, enjoy a holiday, um, meet with uh, Nadesta Pallister, who, uh, who we believe is the author of the letter, uh, ask whatever questions that may arise from your involvement and why you may have, you know, have been contacted. But, uh, but uh, uh, what we really would like you to do is to then uh, find John Pallister, check that he is okay, that he is there of his own volition still. Um, and if he wishes to return, uh, to uh, to pass that on to Mr. Weston, who will you know, meet up with you at a, at a, at a key point. And, um, and he will then take that out of your hands to, to arrange uh, Mr. Palace's return, should he so wish. Um, and um, while you are there to take the opportunity to travel to the Bellamore Canal uh, construction uh, and uh, see for yourselves whether whether Russia is employing slave labour. Um, and would don't... you be charging um, Mr. Palliser with bigamy once he gets back? Or uh, are we assuming that his, his marriage to this Russian lady is, is not actually legal and binding? Well, uh, again, we, we are not entirely sure. I mean, our, our understanding is that it may not be legally binding, but um, again, either, you know, through conversation with Mr. Palliser, that can be brought to light. And, and then obviously uh, uh, we will, you know, look into those matters. I mean, it would be unfair to prejudice anything at this point by uh, commenting, but, uh, but certainly uh, uh, that does remain a possibility, but uh, we wouldn't want to trouble Mr. Palliser at this point until he is clear, until we are clear about his um, allegiances, shall I say. So you would be doing us an enormous service, he says again, and um, uh, we have uh, we'll have Mr. Weston out here in Moscow by the time of your arrival there, and uh, he will find you. Uh, we'll have uh, everything else we can on Palliser in the canal in the meantime too to pass on to you. Um, uh, uh, of course, don't go to the, the British Embassy there. Uh, it won't be formally open yet for some time um, and uh, might draw too much attention. Um, so uh, use, you know, uh, well, the guides on your trip will probably be secret, Russian Secret Service, but um, they are quite harmless uh, and you're quite safe. Um, but they'll be eagle-eyed. So um, when you do decide to visit uh, Mrs. Palliser, uh, and the Bellamore Canal. Best to employ some uh, old uh, Boy Scout girl guide uh, tricks and tips to uh, keep out of the way and make sure you're not um, followed uh, having that meeting perhaps. I'm sorry, I thought you said there wasn't going to be any clandestine behaviour and it would be perfectly all right to be seen in Mr Weston's company. Um, it, it seems to be changing a little well, no, bit no, no, now. No, 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 it will, it will be in Mr Weston. I mean, it would be, uh, but I think Probably the 
best thing is to say discretion is is probably more key. Uh, whilst we don't think it will cause any problems, we don't anticipate any problems, but best not to tempt fate, eh? Uh, and uh, just, uh, you know, keep things uh, on the QT, while, while, you know, while possible. And if not possible, not to worry, you know, but... Um, we don't anticipate there to be any issues at all. Nothing for you to worry about. Hmm. <coughs> this is sounding dodgier by the second <laughs> again. That's <No, it's> dubious. <laughs> now, I, I, now, can I get anyone another drink? Absolutely. Mm. Um, no, thank you. I think one's quite enough. <laughs> Gin and tonic, please. <laughs> That's the spirit, ma'am. You, you hear? You see Weston having a word. You may just catch the word double measures um, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, another round of drinks come and, and Weston then kind of changes the subject a little bit by, you know, talking about, you know, uh, the wonderful weather we're not having or having and uh, so forth. And, uh, and, how, and, how, and how you are really, you know, um, you know, doing a service and you know, really pulls, you know, on, you know, pulls on the, 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 uh, the, the, the country angle, he pulls on the, you know, doing a service for humanity in terms of, you know, if, if they are using slaves and we can, you know, put an end to that because that's wrong. And, and you know, you, you, you know, you be very instrumental in, in making that happen. And, and don't you really want to know about why you had this letter? Surely, surely you have burning questions to, to find you really why you've been contacted. You stop selling it. There's no and, need to uh, sell it. It's our duty, <laughs> therefore we will be going, of course. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, he, which which he, he he likes and sort of you know nods to you a lot if you say that kind of thing. Um, he um, they so they kind of more or less say so so there you are. So uh, can I can I uh, uh, can I ensure that you are you're all one with us on this uh, on this? I'm resort? sure I speak for everyone when I, when duty calls. Of course we answer. Well, that is, oh, we, that, we are not soldiers, madam. No, but we are citizens of the British Empire, are we not? I'm going to remain unusually stoic and quiet about this because my my, my former policeman senses are just going, this is as dodgy as all hell. <laughs> you, you, you must understand with my immediate family, <laughs> this is uh, causing conflicting thoughts, Mr Hill. For myself. I'm sure, but, I, but I'm sure you would agree that... Um, you know, uh, with with such a, a strong link to uh, to Russia, that you would want the best for that country, not only not only for this, but for that country as well. Uh, and uh, we're not asking you to cause any damage or, or hindrances to the Russian state. We just really want to make sure that they are playing by the rules, as I you know. And I think it's only uh, uh, only right and fair. And if they're not, then I'm sure you would be the first to. Uh, to uh, to speak out and, and uh, denounce such uh, such horrendous uh, activities as slavery. Well, of course, slavery is most immoral, but um, I am I am willing to play along and uh, go by your rules, shall we say? But uh, understand, I am more concerned about other matters directed in this letter. Yes, that I'm is sure. why I'm and, um, well. That, that, and, and that is fair enough, as they say. Um, the letter is a strange one, I, I will admit. And um, if there's any personal um, enlightenment that can be gained um, via this trip, uh, I, I see no reason why that is not your primary motivation. Um, we, we are simply piggybacking, piggybacking that in a sense to to make the most of this opportunity uh, without without putting any of you in harm's way of course um he then kind of uh, closes things up uh, by by saying you know reminding you that you know you you will receive some money very soon you should book on the uh, the in tourist uh, tour trip uh they will arrange your visas and so forth but if there are any other issues or any questions you may have at a later stage before you leave, then to please contact contact him and Weston here at the uh, uh, hotel, uh, leave a message on reception, and which we will check regularly and we will get back to you. Um, and, um, but obviously ending with discretion at all times is, is, is required and, um, and not to 
you know, uh, when traveling, not to take anyone other than yourselves into your confidence. Um, who, you never know who might be listening, he says ominously. Um, just one thing, I mean, I would like to retain my, my job when I get back. I mean, it's the opportunities like that are rare. And would you be able to smooth things over at the, at the Herald? Of course, yes. We we will um, we will um, we will present um, a notification to anyone who requires it uh, uh, for any of you uh, that uh, will uh, cover your employment situation. And um, you know, if there is a potential loss of earnings, we would we would uh, look to cover that too. So now um, we just need to so sort out those library I, books. Well, it, as I say, it, it is uh, in one sense. Uh, oh a chance to have a, a holiday of sorts. And uh, we wish you, know, you to make the most of it. Um, uh, but if there are no more questions, uh, I, I, I thank you enormously, uh, enormously I say, uh, if anything else does come up, please just leave us a message at the hotel. Otherwise, if we do not hear from you, we, Mr. Weston, will find you in Moscow um, uh, after you've uh, had your meeting. So uh, thanks once again, and uh, the best of luck. Um, we will, um, we will uh, see you again anon. And with that, uh, Weston and Hill, uh, stand up, uh, shake your hands, nod, uh, and turn and leave. Well, that's quite a thing. <laughs> Exciting is not the word I would use. <laughs> there's there's two bits of information I haven't given you. He mentioned that they had two that Palliser has sent two letters back to England um, in the last uh, couple of years. They are really short. I'm just going to quickly read them so you have that, and then you can decide um, how you want to have a chat about it all, and so forth. So there's a letter from um, Moscow on the 10th of December 1928. Diane. I hope you're well. I'm working here. I won't return now. This country and its system answers all the questions I had, addresses the uselessness I felt. You can apply for an annulment, I know, and go on fine. I won't add any further apologies to those I made when we parted. There's a second letter that came uh, on the 5th of March, 1929, nearly a year, well, not quite a year later, is it? Um, Oh, yeah, three or four months later. Uh, Diane, I sincerely hope this finds you in good health. One stupid thing came to me. Please send the two photographic albums from my family to my cousin Frederick. He really should have them. I will not write again, I promise it. You don't need reminding of me. I hope you have moved on and I hope you have made the annulment. In fact, my old fashioned self rather demands it. Jay. Um, that's they're the two letters you've got copies. So I'll put them onto your uh, handouts folder. So if you do want to look at them again, you can. Okay. That's interesting. Is he? Is the family known to be Catholic? Unlikely if he's a serving MP, but you know, annulment is a very specific thing mm -hmm. and requires certain circumstances. Well, the uh, man is allowed to have his faith if he wants to. Yes, but there are there are laws against Catholics serving as members of Parliament at this point, if I remember correctly, out of character. Um, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> and, I, I have to say, I'm uh, not that concerned about Mr. and Mrs. Pallister's domestic arrangements. Um, but uh, having having someone else pay for a lovely trip to Russia to enjoy the art and um, investigate these very odd letters does seem a bit don't look a gift horse in the mouth absolutely it seems Aww. awfully convenient that it seems that all of us have seen somebody very important who has died recently and suddenly we are whisked uh, off to russia look, look the russia thing is just a sense of duty now look, i have to ask when you saw your loved one they did they like really feel there like carry your shopping did oh, I had a drink of. I had a, pint, a couple of bottles of beer with mine. And, and did they talk about water? 
I've been leaving my kitchen sink full of water the whole time, just in case he came back. Hold on a moment, just just to reiterate, my my guest was a friend of mine at uh, at uh, Cambridge. He was not a loved one, of course not. Hmm. But, but a um, friend can be beloved. Well, yes, absolutely, in in that way. Um, but uh, water, yes. Ed was washing the dishes. Yes, I, I, I noticed. Well, I, I noticed it first that he only turned up in in, in, in watery situations. Um, but on top of that, he says that when he's not here, he feels like he's underwater. Mm. Mm. Yes, my 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 fiance said a similar thing that he he felt a great pressure. I, I he did feel real. I thought I was maybe having some sort of. Oh, I don't know, he, mental he interlude. Ab- he feels absolutely real. I've held his hand and I've hugged him. But he died in the Great War. There's no mistake there. I even wrote to my mother and had confirmation back of the letter. It brought her to tears and I feel terrible for it, but I had to write her. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's... It... <sighs> It was wonderful to see him again, and it brought it all back when he disappeared. Yes, and he did just disappear. I walked out, took my eyes off him for a second, and he'd gone. Much the same, but always when the water also was gone. That's why I've been leaving my sink full of water the whole time. Well, my first encounter was in the pouring rain. Yes, same here. He asked me the strangest question. He said, do you have a towel? (laughs) No. See, my Uncle Harry asked if he'd done something wrong. What sort of nightmarish ghosts ask such questions? I don't believe he's a ghost. Well, I have to say, my, I mean, dear Robert seemed very confused. He didn't behave like a ghost. He, he, He seemed to... It was as if no time had passed and we just saw each other again. He he was as confused as I was and as solid as I was until he disappeared, which is why I thought I'm. it must be something, I don't know, some disconnect in my head due to the grief. Well, Ed was similar. He kept insisting that we had agreed to meet. Obviously, no, that was not the case. He's been dead for over seven years. My only concern is that if we go to Russia, what happens if Mark turns up here? That is a very good point. It is. I can't not be here for him, but I can't not go. But surely if if this loved one of each of ours, well, yours anyway, um, can change where they are. So for example, Firstly, it was out in the pouring rain when I saw Ed, and then it was in my house. Hmm. So, you, you surely they the, can pop to Russia if they want to. You, you think the connection is to us, or, or that they're choosing where they come back? Oh, I don't know about choosing. Um, it certainly doesn't sound right. Uh, I think they are tied to us, though, um, because, well, there was... Nobody there, and uh, nobody else there, certainly oh. when Uncle Harry appeared. I think you're right, I've just realised. Mark has no connection to Walthamstow, where I am staying now. Have it, you moved I've, house since you... I've moved county. I, I, I lived on the Suffolk coast. Oh. Well, that certainly just tends to suggest it's us rather than the places then. I mean... Well, that- with I Harry, Harry believe. had been to our house numerous times, so I couldn't discount it, but um, that would tend to. It is a huge relief, I must say. But also, I have not seen any further activity that could insinuate that they are wandering around, you know, frightening other people. Nobody no. else I've spoken to has mentioned any encounter. No, the with yours... Did they think that no time had passed between the first time you saw them and the second time you saw them? Because Harry was convinced it had been instantaneous, that there'd been no time passed between them, and it was several days. Uh, 
it's it's difficult to remember. I had mm. unfortunately drunk a lot of wine that night. He, he was definitely confused. Perhaps it was, yes, maybe a few minutes or a bit longer, but certainly not as long as it had really been. Mark knew that he was somewhere else. He knew he felt like he was drowning when he wasn't here and that he felt he knew how to get back, but that once he was here, he was being pulled back again. Like it's a struggle he's, he's having. He believes that God has sent him back for a second chance. I'm inclined to agree with him. Well, the only person who seems to be able to shine any kind of light on this at the moment is this Mrs. Palliser, who has asked us to go meet her in Moscow. And therefore, the only real solution to our confusion does lie there. I, I'm I afraid you might be right, Miss Sullivan. Who we all are. That's what I did not understand that at all. This lady is rather elusive in how she contacts us. I must say, I understand my brother's situation much better. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate it is a little strange, but then everything about this is a little strange. Yes. Uh, putting it mildly, Miss Sullivan. It certainly is. Um, <laughs> so, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to have uh, a little five minute tea break in just a moment. And when we come back, uh, the question uh, I'm going to pose to you is between now and when the boat leaves for Russia, is there anything you want to do? OK. All right. So thanks. everyone. We'll be back in five or so minutes. We're going to get a cup of tea. We suggest you do the same. See you in a minute. <laughs>
Hello, and you're back <laughs> with us. Okay, so uh, you are uh, still in the hotel bar uh, discussing the uh, conversation you've had, the mysterious letter from Russia, and um, and your plans, I assume, for the next a few weeks before the tour leaves on the 27th of October. So you've got about 17 days. So um, what do you want to do from here? How, how are you, I mean, we can jump straight to the tour or if there's anything you want to do in the meantime, over to you. I do have a quick question. You did say we'd be rolling sanity every day. Have we got 14 days of sanity before? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll am- Don't remind we'll amalg- him. We'll amalgamate. Yeah, you did remind. Yeah, uh, we'll amalgamate that into into something uh, uh, yeah. at, uh, at some point. Just make a quick note to do it in a minute or two. Okay. <laughs> we've, we've gone mad before we've even set off. <laughs> that would be the shortest campaign ever, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Terribly sorry, you've all been committed before the boat leaves. <laughs> well, there's certainly things I need to do. Um, a, a few things. Uh, firstly, I have a lot of library books to return, but whilst there, I'm going to take out books on Russia. I'm also going to purchase myself a, uh, a phrase book, and I'm going to write several letters for Mark, put them in envelopes with his name on, and put them everywhere, really visible all over my flat, just in case we're wrong and he turns up there. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Well, Francis, obviously being an ex-policeman and private investigator, is somewhat intrigued, and I, I know he's promised to not discuss it with anybody, but he is going to try and track down as surreptitiously as possible any information he can on John Palliser. Yep. This, was it Cousin Frederick, who the photo albums have been sent to? Um, so. Yeah, phrase book is an excellent idea. Yes, I'd like one of those. Um, and then we're going to have to have the awkward conversation with the missus about why I'm disappearing off to Russia for an <laughs> unspecified period of time. It's a case, my love. Um, I'm afraid I can't tell you anything about it. Very important. Very hush hush. I'm sure you understand. Um, obviously, keep an eye on the band for us. Um, and, um, you know, um, I'll, I'll send postcards and I'll make sure I get him something really special when I'm in Russia. I don't think she's very happy about it, but... Um, Why is she not going to know. be? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't blame uh, her. I, th- I thought we were having a, you know, a week in Eastbourne or something, you know, the both of us rather than you flying off to Russia. But anyway, uh, but, you know, I'm sure you... We can, uh, we can go to Eastbourne when we get back. And, and so forth. Yes. Okay, fine. Um... So you're going to do a little bit of investigation uh, and um, Ellen is writing letters to her brother and leave them around the flat. Um, Maxime, you are going to talk to your mother again, is that? Is that was well, it? first, firstly, speak to Joan and explain what's happening. Yeah. Um, he's, he's going to pose a similar sort of story, but uh, it, it, it's one of my mother's relatives who's invited me to see them. Um, hence why I'm going off. Um, once that's all been dealt with, then yes, he will definitely pay a visit to his mother um, and query about this this lady uh, who is addressing him out of the blue and if she knows who she is. Okay, fine. And Georgina, anything particular? Georgina has got very inspired and is in her studio throwing brutalist style bits of clay to get that modernistic, abstract, cubist, futurist, um, Russian vibe going on. Um, yeah, she's she's being a flaky artist and is very excited now at the thought of seeing some of this very um, strange industrialist art in the flesh, in person. Um, and folk art and all that rich history of Russia and interesting glazes and maybe some gold leaf and 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 and, 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 and she and may sound, she may and. talk to some friends and see if any of them know any Russian artists who she could go and visit while she's in Russia. Very good. Okay. Um, the one thing none of you have mentioned, but I'm sure you are all doing as well, is um, booking travel to Russia via the well, tour. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. just just double checking um so just <laughs> to let you know what the situation is you do uh, a couple of days after the meeting each receive a check um from uh uh from the government basically uh for uh, i think it's about 40 pounds or so uh which uh, if you look at your um tour itinerary uh i think um that's gonna get second, the second class yeah second second class is probably your best value option um but obviously if you choose you can have third class or first class on the uh tour um uh that's right yes uh uh 24 pounds for third class 52 for first class um uh, and so on so um you book onto the tour using the money um, have a little left over and um, you also uh, the staff um, at in tourist offices uh, produce a visa application forms for each of you which are fairly simple affairs you know personal details and so forth uh, and um, you return them back to those uh, and um, you get information about um, you know the, uh, the you know the time of uh, departure um, luggage allowance and so forth um, and um, the literature uh, states um, that the price that you're paying includes all necessary transportation of whatever character, entrance or exit visas, hotel accommodation, meals, services of guides, interpreters, sightseeing trips, local transportation, escorted trips to theatres, museums, etc. are all covered in the price. Um, Okay, um, so uh, who, somebody mentioned buying a phrase book. Uh, <laughs> is, so two of you are definitely buying phrase books. Are all of you buying phrase books or just the two of you? I'm, I'm going to see if um, any of my friends actually do speak Russian and see if they can teach me a few simple things whilst I'm, you know, sculpting in the studio. I shall see if I can lure someone over to drink drink wine and talk Russian things. So oh, surely, that, surely that should be vodka. Oh, <laughs> of course. Perhaps vodka. <laughs> well, uh, Georgina then, can I have a look roll to see whether your friends do speak okay. Russian? Okay, let's have a... All right. Let me see, what is my luck and what do I need to roll for it? So um, your a... luck is 3d6 times um, five. Okay, so oh, oh gosh, this is going to involve maths, which is never my strong point. <laughs> Me and Mike have to do this every day. Just tell us what you roll on your 3d6. We'll be fairly yeah. fast. <laughs> okay, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 on my d6. Oh, 75. Look, nice. That is pretty good luck. Is that really good luck? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Marvellous. Okay, so that's my fantastic. best friend is fluent in Russian, right? Oh, no, that's just your starting look. You still actually so, have to roll so, it to so see now, if it... <laughs> now roll a percentile dice to see if you can get 75 or under. Poor old Maxime is just so me. You got 30 luck, is that right? Yep. All right, let so, me see. 75 <laughs> or under. Uh, I have 26. Okay, you definitely have a friend yeah. who's free, who turns up with their own bottle of vodka, perhaps, um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, happily kind of regales you with some Russian for a few weeks. Um, and for that, um, you, uh, I, I presume you've got like zero or one percent in speak of the language Russian. Uh, yes, I, I don't speak any Russian. I okay, do so speak French, German and Italian, however. OK, well, that's uh, hopefully maybe useful at some point or <laughs> in, in Russia. Um, so if you write in, you know, speak Russian, um, we're going to give you uh, a 1D6 starting percent based on your uh, bit of intensive learning from your friend who's teaching you, you know, how to say hello, goodbye and, you know, Hurrah. Your vodkas, please. please. Yeah, <laughs> that's all Thank you need. You. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I like this piece of art. Can I buy it? Okay. Um, meanwhile, uh, those buying a guidebook um, can um, uh, easily pick uh, something up in 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 you know one of the many bookstores in London, and um, uh, there's uh, a cut the quite 
daunting 1928 first edition guidebook to the Soviet Union, coming in at 842 pages, and issued Yikes. by the Society of Cultural Relations of the Soviet <laughs> Union with foreign countries. Um, or um, you can uh, get uh, an edition of Russian Self-Taught uh, in the Marlborough series, which is a practical 135 page book uh, covering the Russian alphabet vocabulary by 34 subjects, including the human body, food and drink, travel by sea, travel by rail, rail and road and so forth. And uh, finally, uh, oh, and also conversational words and phrases. Um, uh, so that, that may be your best bet. Uh, as it does give you a kind of a good easy into uh, okay. you know, common common. I take it there's no Murray's Guide or or anything for Russian for dummies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unfortunately, not. Uh, I'm not sure about Murray's, um, but I mean there there are. I mean I'm just picking out a couple of. Yeah, you got the big option and you got the kind of the, the more practical option. I'm sure there are practical other option, please. other options as well. But, Being the um, bookish sort, I'll have both of those and I'll try and find another. Okay. Same fine. actually. You... I'll I'll take both, but also I'll I'll have uh, back at the house. I'll have plucked out a couple of um, books on Russian film and, and culture and things like that. A bit of a bit of history as well to read. Okay. Okay. Um... Can I have an inch roll from? somebody who's spending money on buying things about Russia. Sure. Okay. Well, that's not a pretty good in for a private investigator. Hang on. Um, an extreme no. Pass for me. <laughs> extreme. Extreme well, not a, from me. I'm not Hard surprised. Me. Okay. Um, while you're wandering around Charing Cross or somewhere buying books on Russia, there are no, numerous map shops in that area um, and the thought may cross your mind oh I wonder if it'd be useful to buy a map of Russia or two or, or something no. like that um, you that the I am merely saying the thought comes into your head is you should you choose to act on it that is entirely your decision I absolutely do in fact I'll get a, a, a if I can like a not just a, a sort of atlas of Russia but if I can as well a road um, guide yeah the the, the the road guide isn't well i mean you can get what you get i mean my, i'm not sure there's probably an, an up-to-date one yet because obviously a lot of roads are still being built uh, but you do get the next best thing so yeah that's fine okay um meanwhile um while um clay and russian is being sculpted and learnt and books are being bought um francis is um wearing the shoe leather down by doing a bit of uh investigation um i think you said john palliser to start with is yes that right? yes all i need to do is find the right page and there i am okay so um, right, so what are, how are you approaching this? What, what's your thoughts on investigation, this name? Um, well, for a start, I think a visit to Somerset House for records of both marriages and deaths. Okay. Okay, let's have a library use for Hey. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> not good. No, um, I've only got twenty percent. Ah, that's a fumble. Okay, okay, that's fine. I mean, it doesn't mean you don't find anything. It just means it takes a lot of time, and you probably need some help from the, yes. uh, one of the librarians. Uh, but uh, you know, this is just not a quick nip in. I'll do it in the morning and go out. You, you probably spend a good week wandering around, asking, digging through things, going not only to Somerset House, maybe to the British Museum and so forth to, you know. Well, um, well he's an engineer, that. isn't he? So probably, presumably the Royal Engineers, yeah. whatever society, okay. the professional body that you would probably have had to have belonged to, to, to practice. Okay, so based on your result, taking that into account slightly, I will tell you what you find. Um, <laughs> so, um, Okay, let's see. Um, you do find uh, one of the things you do find is a uh, 
a Morning Post newspaper of uh, September 28th, 1927, which reports on the, mal the marriage of Palliser and Diane Chamberlain, Chamberlain on the uh, preceding Saturday. Uh, the bride was given away by her father, Sir Austin Chamberlain, MP. Um, you also find um, a mention uh, of Palliser as a senior consulting engineer on some civil engineering work done on the Suez Canal in 1928. Uh, he was working or consulting with Amazonas Engineering Company Limited, who, um, who are based in London. Um, uh, and um, the other thing you find is the Palace of Family House, uh, 12 Mount Street in Mayfair. You do, you, you, you obviously you find the birth records and that kind of stuff, but they're all as they should be. Nothing jumps yep. out weird or anything. That just confirms that, yeah, they do exist and all that kind of thing. Um, the, um, but you do find yeah, the family, uh, the house where presumably, uh, well, you yeah, Diane Palace is living um, at this time, uh, from what you gather, perhaps with her parents. Um, again, that's in uh, an address in Mount Street in Mayfair. Um, so, yeah, they're the key things you would pick out with that role you made, Lynn. <laughs> My dice don't like me tonight. <laughs> um, if you uh, shout if you want to follow up on any of those particularly. Um, is anyone else doing any research just out of interest? It's OK to say no. I wanted to do a little bit of reading on Russia generally, but I, I don't think it would, other than establishing that the character's done a bit, I don't think it needs anything particular. So. Yeah, no, okay. Um, just thinking um, what I can tell you. There's a few, let me just get you the right uh, little bit of info just to give you an, all a, a little overview. Yes, I'm hoping my Russian friend might give me some pointers as to sort of yeah. etiquette and how much vodka to drink and whether one <laughs> says cheers. So you all kind of pick up on the information I'm about to give in various ways, but it's more or less the same kind of thing. Um, but basically, um, I, I'm looking at the wrong bit in the text. <laughs> that's I thought, oh, I saw that. Oh, that's the bit I need to tell you. No, that's not the bit I need to tell you. <laughs> Let me just grab the right bit, which is... But you know, obviously, you know about the October 1917 revolution during the Great War, mm -hmm. when the Soviet, uh, well, the people, um, you know, uh, relieved the uh, the Tsar of power and so forth, and the Soviet state came into being. Um, since that time, um, there has been. Oh, I know where it is. <laughs> I'm looking aimlessly through my notes. Is it and, in the uh, other folder? It's no, it's in this, it's in this bit here. <laughs> I've got my little timeline of Russia. Okay. Right. Okay. So yeah, so you had the revolution, then there was a civil war with the white Russians and the, the red communists and so forth. Um, and, you know, uh, kind of culminating with the uh, ex-Zar Nicholas II being, uh, being executed along with his family. Um, the, uh, by 1920, the Civil War had kind of come to the end with the Red Army uh, victorious. Um, then uh, in the kind of, uh, well, up to about 21, uh, there was uh, various kind of crackdowns on the bourgeoisie, private trade, arrests, confiscations, exiles and imprisonments, which has kind of leaked through news reports and then and there's certainly into some books by now. Um, <clears throat> Church and private land was redistributed to uh, to the various different peoples of Russia, mainly the peasants. Um, and um, um, basically, uh, economy ruined, uh, and so forth, widespread poverty, um, mutinies, uh, strikes, and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, so, which kind of birthed the new economic palace policy, which has been running from 1921 to 1928. Um, 
Many have been killed. Uh, reports vary from 10 to 15,000 people have been killed in this period uh, with thousands, perhaps 50,000, perhaps 100,000 people reportedly imprisoned by the state. Um, Lenin agreed to the concessions to form the new economic policy, uh, which restores a level of free trade um, and so forth. And um, the Soviet state is uh, recreated as a union of Soviet Socialist Republics or USSR in 1922. Um, 1924, Leningrad dies. Uh, Petrograd is renamed Leningrad and Britain recognizes the USSR. Um, the, those of you who are more politically inclined may, may recall that in 1926, Trotsky was expelled from the party. Uh, 1927 reports of poor harvests and so forth. Um, however, 1927, Stalin seizes control and power and implements uh, uh, one year later the first five year plan, which is a, a, a effectively a plan to uh, revolutionize, industrialize uh, Russia and uh, modernizing the kind of um, more. Uh, uh, well, primitive agricultural methods and so forth, um, uh, modern, trying to you know, drive the country into modernization, um, which is effectively where things are more or less at this moment in time uh, with mass projects, uh, construction, uh, engineering feats and so forth. Um, and um, reports recently over the last uh, couple of years have been about um, the formation of collective farms, where in the West you will have heard of far farmers being pulled together to work in collective farms, being uh, moved, and um, uh, uh, peasants in the, uh, called kulaks uh, sent to labour camps and exiled for not complying, uh, uh, which has um, been frowned upon by the world at large, but information um, is very slow and uh, in small scale coming out of the country at this point in time. Uh, there is also talk about priests being arrested, uh, churches um, closed down, some would say looted and destroyed, but again, no hard proof necessarily on any of that. Um, that's your quick overview of Russia. Um, obviously, as... Uh, um, fantastic role players I'm sure you will all go away after tonight's session and read some Russian history to get completely up to speed um, but I'll leave you to do that and uh, it's not a requirement <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so um, there was um, okay so any other things anyone wanted to follow up on or research before we move ahead did I find out anything about the cousin that the photo albums were sent to? It seems a particularly bizarre request from a man who, you know, the only other request is for his wife to annul their marriage. Yes. Um, unfortunately, despite your valiant efforts in um, searching through libraries and, and so forth, you, you uh, fail to really pinpoint that one down, hmm. which may be because it can't be found. It may be a consequence of a bad library use role. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what it could be? But um, but um, you don't really yeah, pin that one down, I'm afraid. Hmm. That's a mystery for another day, then. <laughs> I suppose I should definitely check, because I'm, I'm just assuming. But I imagine that my mother doesn't know anything about this yes. Palisade woman. OK. Well, uh, she doesn't, but she's very pleased you're going to Russia. She's, in fact, more than pleased. She's delighted that you're going to Russia, um, uh, which she thinks is going to be marvellous for you. Um, and, um, and she even has a request. Um, she reminds you that you may recall that back when she lived in Russia with her mother and father, um, her mother, uh, Titania, um, oh, sorry, um, your mother is Titania, isn't it? Yeah, Titania's yeah, parents, 
um, had uh, had obviously serving staff, uh, household staff uh, at the time, you know, pre pre revolution, um, and. Um, one of uh, your mother's uh, well memories is of fond memories is of a uh, an older lady who uh, was called Daria um, Lebedva, who uh, had um, long worked um, for your mother's you know, for your grandmother, and that uh, and had a re- relatively close relationship with the family, and your mother fondly remembers her and and remembers that um, she had a daughter who would be, you know, probably, you know, reaching adulthood by now, uh, who she seems to remember was called um, Sophia, Sophia uh, Lebedva. And um, she's wondering, when you go to Russia, wouldn't it be really great if you could look up Sophia um, perhaps, you know, to find out whether, you know, Daria is still with us, uh, and if, you know, and if, uh, if or not, uh, certainly making contact with Sophia and being able to put her in touch with your mother would be a, would be a wonderful thing. And, and also great for you to meet, you know, somebody with some family history. Um, so, um, she, uh, says, you know, that, uh, that would be, that would be marvellous if you could do that. Okay. Uh, they they, uh, they uh, remind you uh, they they lived in um, uh, St Petersburg, yeah, which is uh, Leningrad these yes. days. Yes. Do those of us with phrase books pick up any Russian? Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, I'll come to that. Um, she does give you an address that she had for Daria as well, so you have oh, that okay. address just so uh, you uh, know where you're going. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, phrase booky things, um, you, um, right, okay, so I handily wrote this down earlier because I knew you'd ask me. Uh, okay, so your base skill, okay, if you uh, don't have any Russian yet, and this includes Georgina, who's just add what you've learned to this. Basically, uh, it's a quarter of your intelligence score, your int score, plus 25%, with the 25% being the phrase book. So uh, if you add those together, that will give you a base Russian score in terms of, you know, having gone through the phrase book a few times and, you know, marked where important things are, useful things. You, with the phrase book, you get, you get a base skill of that. Um, quarter of your intelligence plus 25 percent plus 25 percent yeah so right. just round oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be lovely and say round it up rather than oh aren't you a sweetie and um maxime um did did you pick up a phrase book as well yeah yeah amongst other okay so so um like that basic uh, book same same will apply except um you just add 25 percent to your stand your russian skill you've already got okay yeah. I can do halves and fifths, nice. Mike. Why did you pick a quarter? <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. The author picked it, and this is a play test. So this is why we're we doing it by the book, you see. <laughs> You're so good. Um, so um now let me see if anything else. Well, oh yes, there is a couple of things that will happen as well in this period of time. Um, so um, you are kind of all set, you know, uh, I presume some of you may go out and, um, you know, get a new wardrobe or a couple of new items of or travel clothes. Um, I No one has mentioned that they're going out to buying a long sword or a Thompson machine gun at this point. So I'm presuming you're not doing that, but if you are, it's one of the things you should let me know. <laughs> well, why would um, I need another sword? I've already got one. <laughs> would, you are. would I still? Would I have kept my police truncheon? Oh well, yes. Oh yeah. I'll I'll be digging <laughs> that out of the 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 footlocker and taking that with me. You know, just just in case. Well, you you knew you were gonna you know go into you know private detective work, so that 
might come in handy once in a while. You know, you, oh, you've yes. dealt with people. You know, they can be funny. And how. Um, I'm just going to pack an inordinate amount of art materials. <laughs> oh, I suppose clay could be used as an improvised weapon. If it's hard enough. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think Georgina is quite going to take clay, but she's certainly going to load up with sketchbooks and um, chalk pastels and maybe a watercolor set and um, little bits and pieces so she can record her experiences. I might get myself some new gloves and a scarf and a warmer coat because I would imagine it might be a bit nippy in Russia at this time of year. Now, this isn't a hint. It's just more a idea that you may choose to ignore. <laughs> um, but while shopping, you do pass the the um, the shop that sells useful binoculars and cameras and things like that. You may Umbra. choose to just walk, breeze on by. No, no, but camera, camera, please. <laughs> camera and film. I, I, are you okay. buying the largest possible camera you can get, or maybe the smallest kind of little bellows? Oh, I, I think or... I think the smallest practical travel camera. He's okay. he's not a you know, he's a practical man. Just the one, you know, the one film with a few plates, or or, or more. Oh than no, one. I think probably a little bit more than that. You okay. know, not not excessive, okay. but just checking. I, I might ask you later about that, but okay, that's cool. Um, any, uh, yeah, anyone well, else? He he's going to get some, um, you know, opera glasses for the the ballet and so on. Yeah, you will <gasps> be going to ballet. Yeah. The ballet. I'd forgotten about the ballet. Well, yes. Marvelous. Didn't you see Stravinsky? That they're doing Stravinsky on this tour, I believe. Uh, it's some sort of Ooh. folk ballet, I've heard. Now, Georgina, your friend has advised you that waterproof boots and oh. good socks in Russia are well worth having. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I shall purchase anything it, it, that my friend has suggested might be a good idea. A big so, warm coat yeah. is the other thing. Right, I shall do that, and maybe a nice set of you know long long sleeved silk combinations and things like that, just for a little bit of extra layers. Excellent. Okay. Um, during all this kind of wonderful, you know, getting ready to travel, um, your visa application is returned, uh, all completed, uh, uh, returned to you by the in tourist agency. It's a very simple document um, that. Um, that just kind of has a photo on of yourself and your details, name, so forth, um, date of birth, nationality, occupation, passport number, that kind of thing. Um, it's got a couple of smudged official looking stamps on it. Um, but um, of interest, perhaps, a little, maybe a little odd, I don't know, um, it does state date of departure from the Soviet Union on the form. And it has been set a full year hence, the 30th of September, 1930. What? Not purely the date, end date of the trip. Oh, sure, that's a mistake. I mean, it gives you, it gives you some latitude, should you miss the boat home, I guess. But, you know, you know, you, you, you know it's not, it's not in any sense a bad thing, but um, it's a little odd because you were kind of weren't expecting a full year's, you know, validation visa, as it were. But, uh, but you, you have one nonetheless. I never travelled overseas before. This completely glosses over me. I just assume all visas are for a year. Um, and um, about I don't know, a week and a half after your you know meeting with Hill and Weston, um, Maxime, um, you are um, you're in bed one night, um, just kind of dozing off. And um, you hear a voice suddenly in the darkness. It says, um, hello, Maxime. Oh, 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 please keep the light off. And it's um, uh, your, uh, your uh, visitor. OK. Um, yeah, I'm, I was sort of been fumbling for the light anyway, but... Um... I'm carefully trying not to move too much in order to wake Joan. And I just sort of do a 
like I put my hand to my head probably from having a bit of wine earlier and having a bit of a headache. What do you want? It's me, Edward. Um, yes, I know it's you. I, you I know this here? is up. I know it's upsetting you, but but what can I do? I I don't know what's happening to me. Um, to us, you know, I I I have to rely on you absolutely. But can, will you help me? Can Can we go into another room, perhaps away from here? I don't want to wake her. Yes, of course. Yes. And I use that excuse to actually try and grab either his wrist or his clothing just to feel for myself from what the others were saying of, yes, it feels very real. I want to get that myself. Okay. Yeah, you kind of, you know, you get up and then you go in and you, you just grab a head and you do, you grab, you know, either his arm or, or jacket or whatever. Um, and, um, uh, uh, you know, it's tangible, you know, tangible and real. And uh, you kind of, you know, pull him out to the corridor, I guess, or, or to the, you know, the one of the uh, lounge rooms or something. Yeah, yeah, um, I'll take him to actually sit down. Um, you, you know, I've, I've really missed you, you know. Uh, do, do you want a drink? No, no, I just want to hear you speak. I, I, it seems like it's been so long. Oh, it, it has. Um, you, you must for, you must forgive my tones from um, last time we spoke. Um, well, how, how have you been? Tell, 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 what have you been doing today? Oh, today, uh, mostly reading. Um, I'm actually going away for a while. I'm not going to be staying here for a bit. Oh, wh- wh- where are you going? You wouldn't believe me if uh, if I told you. Um, I've I've been asked to go to Russia. Out of all Russia. Places. My mother is most pleased. Who's asked you to go? I'm afraid I can't say, old chap. It's confidential. Oh, like that is it? Oh, oh, oh! I see. Well, well, d- d- don't take it personally. I don't mean it that way. I I, I can't talk about it. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Well, very good. But well, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll find you wherever you are, you know, it's, it, well, I mean, I think I'm with you most of the time, aren't I? I mean, I was only just talking to you a moment ago. Well, you appeared in the bedroom. Yeah, no, before then, we were talking, we talked before, didn't we? In the kitchen. It was, but it was uh, a, a couple of hours back, wasn't it? No, no, you are deeply confused, Ed. But, um... Don't don't worry. There are there are others like me who are are seeing people like you. Who, I mean, you, you oh, s- yes, I, I've seen I've seen them. Yes, yes, I've I, yes, I remember. Yeah, I've seen. There are some other people. I didn't know they were like me though. They were just there where I was. Where was I? I thought I was here. No, no, I. Do no, you, I was there, wasn't I? I, I don't know. Do I, it's feel- all a bit confusing. Like you are drowning, Ed. Not, not right now. This quite moment. overwhelming. Uh, not. The, sometimes it feels like I'm kind of treading water. I guess. No, I guess not really. But that's what comes to mind. Yes, I. I I'm waiting. Waiting. I, I wondered if you would say that. The others have said the same. So, so I hear. I have missed you, though. Have you missed me? Of course I've missed you. Of course. It was so shocking and unexpected when you you left us like that. Well, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to be with you as much as I can. But you never told any of us anything. I, I had no idea that you were suffering like that. Well, I'm not, I don't know if I'm suffering. I don't remember. Perhaps I... Perhaps this is suffering. I'm being shown do, something I can't. Do you not I'm remember not really... the, the the letter, Ed? The le- the letter. We, what letter? You wrote to me before you. You did it. Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe I did. It's all a little hazy at the moment. Perhaps it will come back to me. Do you still have it? Yes, yeah, somewhere. 
Um, one moment, I think it's in my study. Okay, you go to go to the study, but just as you leave the room, you kind of just turn turn back to look at him, and he's gone. Maxim sort of expected that would happen, but he he still intends to get the letter out and at least keep it on him from now on in case in case that does appear again. Can I have a sanity roll, please? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, yeah, that's a fail. Could you roll a d6, please? Mm -hmm. He's uh, keeping it together in his exterior, but certainly not, uh, oh dear. Uh, that's, a, that's a six. That's a six, six, okay. Okay, can you roll me uh, intelligence? Yep. Oh, yeah, I did pass. Oh, God. <laughs> Right, well, you, you have a, a little bout of madness on your own. Um, and um, uh, your partner's name, Joan, isn't it? Yes, she's um, called Joan. Um, Joan finds you in the morning in the study, papers strewn around. Perhaps she doesn't know this, but you have the letter to uh, Edward kind of clutched in your hand. Uh, you did pass out because you drained at least three bottles of wine in the <laughs> in night. Uh, as you kind of, you know, first tried to make sense of it, got really angry about it, then started kind of weeping about it and then took solace in wine and um, <coughs> made a bit of mess of your study, empty wine bottles lolling around. You have some explaining to do in the morning as you wake up without any memory of any of this. <laughs> However... Uh, I guess you uh, eventually kind of uh, pass it off uh, <laughs> in some way. Yeah, um, I, I convinced her maybe to to go to my mother's whilst I'm not here, if she needs any company. She thinks that's probably a good idea based on <laughs> how you were found this morning. Um, okay, that's fine. We'll we'll move forward a little bit. Um, Lynn, um, Francis, uh, again, uh, probably a couple of weeks after the meeting. Um, you are visited by uh, Uncle Harry, uh, who appears at night, um, and um, you first become aware as you feel this hand on your shoulder. There's this kind of split second of like, oh, and then you just instinctively know it's him before you even turn to see him, his smiling face, and um, and uh, he's just smiling, beaming at you as you turn round. Good evening, Harry Bach. What can we do for you? Well, it's uh, it's just it, it's uh, I, I just see how you are. Well, you'll never believe it. Um, I'm about to go to Russia. It, I mean, saw you a minute ago. It's it's only been a moment. It, it, uh, how are you? Why didn't you mention that before? Um, let's have another beer. Shall we? Um, it's been a little bit longer than just a moment. It's It's been two weeks, Harry. Two weeks? Crikey. Well, um, well, yes, let's have another beer. And um, he kind of, this time he doesn't seem, he kind of plays with it, he kind of drinks a little bit, but he doesn't kind of drink it like he did the first time. More, I don't know, maybe not quite so thirsty. Um, he uh, he says, do you think this is going to, they're going to allow this to keep happening? Who, who do you mean they? <clears throat> well, I don't know, but I, somebody must be making this happen. You know, well, yes, I've been said. thinking about that. Um. Because I'm not the only one. I mean, you know, I thought I might have had a bit of a bump on the head. Um, it's causing me to hallucinate you for a while there, apart from the empty beer bottles. Um, but apparently there's at least three other people keep seeing their um, their dead loved ones. Um, and I've met them. That's um, who I'm going to Russia with. Not, not that you can tell anybody about that, obviously. Oh, oh well, uh, mum's the word. Oh. Um, I, I won't say anything. Other ones, yes. Um, I thought I thought I brushed against someone. 
perhaps there are. I don't know. Maybe that was just my imagination. But things are all right for you, aren't they? This isn't hard for you, is it? This is all right. This is all okay. Well, I mean, it has to be said it's a bit odd. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure it's entirely normal for people to be sitting in their sitting rooms having bottles of beer with their dead relatives. But, um, I mean, you know how fond I was of you, and it is nice to see you again, um, even if you might be some sort of bizarre hallucination or... Well, I'm not an hallucination, am I? Cause, I mean, a loo- look, this beer bottle, like, you know, it, I wouldn't, you know. Well, yeah. That's know. the bit I, mean, I can't explain. Well, I, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm flesh and blood, you know, he stamps his fist on the table or whatever. And um, he says, but, you know, but um, it is strange, but I think I did have a thought, you know. Mm-hmm. This could be heaven. You know, you told me I'm dead. Yes. Do you think you might be? Uh, I take a very large swig of beer at that. (laughs) Have a sanity roll. (laughs) Oh, God, what is my sanity? Oh, actually, no, I made it. Oh, uh, lose one point, please. Yay, that's better than last time. In fact, don't lose a point. You've reached maximum at this point, so you're okay. You don't. You can't lose any more. You you lost enough the first time. Because I lost six the first time, didn't I? Or did I lose you actually more than lo- that? You lost seven. I thought I had. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you lost seven. So you're maxed out. You have gotten used to the weirdness very rapidly. Oh, God. Perhaps, be- <laughs> perhaps, perhaps it's because Uncle Harry is such a nice chap. I suspect and, uh, so. I suspect uh, and everything. so. Yes, of now, course, that's it. He <laughs> does. He does. Oh, at that, as you kind of like pause for a second and, and kind of like um, think, oh my word. <laughs> um, he, he, he says, where I was before, there was something else there. I didn't like it. I could hear, I could hear them, but they didn't talk. They just made sounds and they looked. I didn't see them. They were like shadows, but they I didn't like the look of them. I, you haven't seen anyone else like me, have you? No, I've not seen anyone else like you. But like I said, well, um, some people I met a couple of weeks ago, they'd seen other people like you. Well, I'm just, just telling you, if you see anyone that maybe is like me, but isn't, this looks a bit wrong... Maybe they don't have a face or something. I don't want to scare you, but... Well, you're not doing a very good job, Harry. Keep, you keep, are scaring me now. Keep keep away from them. That's all I'm... Because I didn't like I didn't like them. I've kept away from them now. I, I, I keep away from their sounds. Um, I shall do my best. You know, they... I heard some... I heard... I think, I think they call them the Zaloz, Zalozny. Is that I Russian? Heard, I heard the name Zaloz, Zalozny. I don't know. Is it Russian? Maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. Sounds like it might be. I've been learning Russian, you know. Well, well maybe, maybe you could find out. Hmm. But keep away from them. Don't go near the Zalozny. They, they. They're just wrong. They're just wrong. And um, you kind of, you know, talk for a little bit more, but not not a great deal. And then at one point you kind of just blink and he's gone. And he's gone. Um, Luckily, uh, or perhaps not, Georgina and Eleanor um, don't see anyone for a few days. Um, um, you are left in peace whether you wish that or not my flat is full of buckets and bowls of water <laughs> very good um, so uh, where are we on time okay so um, what we're going to do unless this is your final chance now uh, is there anything else you want to do before you get on that boat to Russia 
because that's where we're going to kick off the next session. Maybe have... take Joan out for a meal because it's yeah. the least that Maxine can that Sounds do. good. That sounds great. Okay, there's one thing left to do, which is a few sanity rolls. Now, to spare you, <laughs> to spare you the pain. Now, the reason the reason I haven't told you that, that there's a couple of things happening that I haven't really elaborated on. Um, since you started having these visits, um, your sleep hasn't been brilliant. It's not been awful, but you your sleep has been lighter, more interruptible weird dreams once in a, not every night but once a, yeah, it's not a good sound night's sleep all the time i've got an 18 month old child how good do you think my night's sleep was <laughs> oh, anyway <laughs> you, yours just got even worse um <laughs> and um and the other thing is um this is non-mechanic speak there's this sense of it's kind of like a sense of being drained, but but I don't, I want um, it's not you're not being drained, you're not losing magic <laughs> in a mechanical sense. It's a kind of you know a human sense of just feeling the weight of the world on you in a sense, and and the, the visits, you know, you you are your brain is kind of working overtime a lot on them, and and this is coming out with the sleeplessness and and the strangeness that you are seen to be at the centre of having an effect on on you uh, 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 mentally, basically. Uh, so there is a sense that you have, you're potentially losing, you know, a, at the most it would be a sanity point a day, but some days, you know, you're fine, you don't lose it. Um, and uh, as we as we agreed, there's, there's basically 17 days of sanity rolls. So without making 17 sanity rolls, because that would be really fun, what I'm going to say is, could you make four sanity rolls each and let, and I will determine, <laughs> on an average, what you may or may not have lost. Okay, oh, this is yeah. this is going to be entertaining, isn't it? Okay, okay. got 48, right. So that's, a, that's an, a pass. Oh, uh, nope, fail. You can't extreme pass sanity, can you? No. Um, I, 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 might, I might, I might, I don't know, I, I, make a note, because I might, I might count it in every, as a averaging. Okay. Right. Um, well, in that case, I got a couple of hard sanity passes, one normal sanity pass, and uh, one fail. Okay, that's great. Um, I've anyone got else to four. I've got two two good passes and two spectacular two fails. Okay, great. <laughs> I've got two regular passes, two fails. <clears throat> two fail and. Uh, um, Eleanor? One extreme, two passes, one fail. One extreme, two passes, one fail. Okay, fine. Okay, I am going to work out what that means for Sanity Loss and tell you next time so you can keep the anticipation <laughs> going. Um, but we You're will, wicked. Uh, <laughs> we will uh, draw things to a close here uh, and, um, and uh, we will kick off with your Sanity Loss as you get onto the ship heading to Russia on uh, at the end of October in the next session. So thanks for playing. And Thank um, thanks yeah. everyone for watching. And uh, we'll see you again in a week's time. Same place, same time, same bat time, same bat place. And uh, <laughs> see you all again. Thanks for watching The Dead of Winter. Bye, everyone. Night all. Bye. Bye. Bye.